Is that door unlocked so she can get back in that way? Yes. <laughs> All right, so this is my mini design task project and then a brief overview of my research. Um, so kind of introduction of how I came up with this idea. Uh, going through, obviously, science method courses here at State, my undergrad, uh, we're taught a lot about how to teach, but we don't really think too much. I mean, we do a little bit, but I never really thought about how science students actually think. So I have all these great lessons, and I'm a science nerd, and I want everyone to love it but maybe my students aren't the same way, or they might come in with misconceptions and things like that. Maybe they've already put in their mind, like, I'm not gonna be a scientist. I'm not an old white guy in a lab coat, never gonna be, so science isn't for me, or maybe science has been hard, and things like that, just like other subjects, like math and English. So I'm kind of thinking more in that realm, and I've kind of changed my research, which I get to at the end. So that's kind of what my focus on, is what's teaching strategies work best in a science classroom, what kind of misconceptions are there, and how do science students perceive science before they come in? <coughs> so um, for my design, my hypothetical class, I have about 12 uh, junior, senior level college students. Um, I just put the University of Florida because that's where I was thinking <laughs> going for a while. Um, eight females, four males, and we have uh, once a week, meet for three hours, and we have different concentration areas, biology, physics, and chemistry. Um, so what their project is, is they're going to be placed in groups of three, so four groups total, and they're going to be asked to think of a common misconception in their science field, so biology, physics, or chemistry, and they're going to have to do some research, some um, case studies, empirical research, action research, whichever they can find, at least four sources, on how to best combat those misconceptions and how to teach it. Hopefully they'll find that inquiry is best. Um, they're going to create a one to two day lesson plan, or their misconception of how to reteach it or to teach it. And then they're going to use their peers, so like you guys would, to actually teach the lesson. Uh, and then groups are going to have one class period to work on in class, and then one additional week to work on it. So they get two weeks total to work on that. Um, so the project must be presented either a PowerPoint poster, handout, or any other kind of visual product. And then the other part obviously needs to be interactive to their audience, about 15 minutes to 20 minutes in length, with a clear introduction, middle, in conclusion, to wrap it up, uh, the project should include questions and potential answers that the students might give, so their peers mm -hmm. or their future students in the class, mm -hmm. which is something that's always important in lessons to kind of prepare yourself for questions people have. Um, and then a mock lesson should be engaging and interactive for their peers, and then graphics should be used to just be more visual stimulating, which I'm sure you like that part. <laughs> um, so here's the rubric. So I'm looking for use of class time. So they have that one class period. Are they actually looking at stuff? Or are they just talking about the weekend and what movie's coming out? Um, their graphics, are they relevant? Or are they just slap something on there? Um, their required elements, their knowledge gain, so we're going to ask some questions. Their attractiveness of the presentation, you know, do they just slap it together last minute? Or is it actually appealing? Uh, grammar, obviously, it's college level, so we want to make sure we're on that. Um, introduction, middle, and conclusion, kind of like how your rubric is. Is there a clear introduction? Is it informative? Does it draw audience in? Our middle is engaging and interactive. And our conclusion is to wrap it up in a smooth, effective way. And then obviously there are five research pieces. <coughs> so some research questions I have. Um, has student confidence in creating a lesson? Should we say lesson plan? Or no, just lesson. For their future students, increase, decrease, or remain the same? Because some students haven't really done a full lesson plan or maybe not one specifically for science. Because I remember I've done a lesson plan, but it might have not been something mm -hmm. I could actually use in the classroom. So this one they'll actually be able to use in their future classrooms. Are they going to identify realistic science misconceptions? <coughs> what are some effective ways of teaching misconceptions? What part of science uh, do pre-service science teachers feel the most unprepared for? And is inquiry-based instruction the most effective way to teach science students? Any questions so far? Um, so I picked four of my favorite or most relevant, and like I said before, and I'm going to talk about it again at the end, I kind of swapped what my first intentional research was, and I kind of switched it around. Mm -hmm. So this first one is my favorite, and I've used it in a couple of other assignments as well. Um, the study was originally done by David Chambers in 1983 in Australia. This one was just another one that was done more recent in 2012. And it's basically a study on how do students in elementary school view scientists. So all they did, and I've done this with my students before too, 
is they give them a sheet of paper, crayons, markers, whatever they want to use, and they tell them to draw a scientist. <laughs> and they look at certain characteristics, <clears throat> gender, what they're wearing, any glasses or what their hair looks like, what kind of setting they're in, and I'm sure you can guess, most students are going to draw an older white guy in a lab coat with some Bunsen burners and chemicals. Mm -hmm. And we know now, obviously, that science is so much more than that, in that you can be any gender or race and be considered a scientist. Um, so that's what the major conclusions were of this one. Um, this one right here, all right, this one was um, in Detroit. And this study was three years, <coughs> three years study. And this was looking at schools that were failing in Detroit and looking specifically at their science programs. And they noticed that most of it was just using those lower level thinking skills, just memorizing facts, going through the textbook. And so they challenged some teachers, and there was obviously some resistance with this, they wrote about in there, um, with doing more inquiry based, uh, doing more experiments, doing more hands on, taking them outside instead of just using the textbook. So they used about 8,000 middle school students in Detroit. It was over three years. They did a pre and post test, and obviously they found that the students gained more knowledge with that inquiry based learning. And they also used um, some projects as well. Um, this one. Okay, this one was done in Turkey, seventh grade. Sorry about that. Okay. I just talked about grammar and mindset. All right, um, seventh grade students in Turkey. And so they looked at some resistance that science students had and how they could combat that. So some resistance were. Um, students being bored or not getting it or not being relevant and so they once again if you notice my topic is inquiry based learning so they use that again and use more relevant topics for these students and there was about 95 students 14 teachers and they split them up into a traditional teaching method and inquiry based method they use the same tasks they used um, observation interviews achievement test surveys to collect their data and then once again obviously the post test for the experimental group that used that inquiry based learning showed a higher achievement at the end. Uh, and this one is kind of the big one. This was from 1984 to 2002, and then they uh, finally submitted it in 2010. This was basically to see what is inquiry based instruction look like, what it looked like before, what does it look like now. And um, this kind of had three phases. So they kind of looked at the report collection and they studied all their results. These are from several different schools. And then they use analysis to um, kind of look at the scores and see if they were better or worse with traditional or inquiry based. And once again, this was an 18 year study. And it showed a positive correlation in those science teachers who use inquiry based instruction. All right, um, so kind of my conclusion. So, once again, at first I was going to look at science method courses, but I couldn't find a lot of research at all on that. Mm. I found like one or two, which I included. So I focused more on how science students learn because I feel like that's important for future science mm -hmm. teachers. That's how we need to be thinking, like what are those misconceptions? Like one is, um, we talked about that with the water and the penny, like mm -hmm. how many drops of water on a penny? A lot of students think one or two, but actually with surf retention and all that, you can get up to 100 drops on, uh, of water on a penny. Or also with the seasons, a lot of people think it's where, you know, the position and all that stuff, they don't think about the tilt of the earth. So there's some other misconceptions like that. So I focus more on my research on that because I think that would benefit if I ever do teach a science method courses is looking at that as well. Can you go back to that very first study you, you said you used it before where they draw? Uh -huh. So oh, this one? Yes. Yeah. So the first one was done by David Wade Chambers in 1983 in Australia and it was called Draw, draw a Scientist Experiment. And then this is another one that they did in Spain. And it's done all over the U.S. Show that just like in other countries around the world, most students have this idea in their mind that a scientist looks only a certain way and only performs certain tasks. This research was done to try to show students anyone, even themselves, can be considered some. So do the students who do this, like in 1983, where, what country were they in? Australia. Did they draw, um, well, so, so... Definitely, I guess the other minority there is Aboriginal people mm -hmm. and then just white people. Yeah. So they don't have a lot of diversity. I mean, they have some Asian, mm -hmm. others, but so, so where they're mostly drawing um, the traditional white male mm -hmm. in male, Australia. Yeah. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when this study is done, um, it's done in Spain, it's done all over con in other countries in the United States, it's always the same. The same, same picture. Mm -hmm. Same, same, same picture. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And what I actually did is I did this on the first day, and I got kind of the same thing, majority. Uh -huh. um, and then I had them do it again at the very last day. And a lot of people drew like gardeners or astronauts and themselves even, uh -huh. and things like that. So uh -huh. that. That was my first year, my big take home message. Like anyone can be a scientist. Right. You can right. think scientifically. Thinking scientifically mm -hmm. is the real key.